Hey guys, it's Desiree's Monster Piece Kennel. And I just figured I'd do a little bit more with my channel about well being, etc. And so, this is a new mom. And she pushed out one pup to have a little issues. And the vet always says if they keep pushing for more than, later, for more than two hours, they don't get anything out. Bring them. There could be an obstruction. So sometimes when you get a C-section, the mom, it's weird. She don't, I guess, feel the pain of labor or she'll wake up and realize like, hey, are these really my puppies? <laughs> you know, which the case of her, you know, I kept her separated from them until uh, she came, well, when she first came back, I, you know, let the puppies nurse off her because she was still kind of out of it. But when she started to wake up, she started growling at them because, again, she was, you know, so up in anesthesia. She was a little confused. Didn't know what was going on. You know, so, you know, some dogs naturally just take to it. Like, hey, these are my puppies. These are mine. And then other dogs... They, uh, they just don't get it. So, you know, I wasn't going to be process of elimination, have her hurt a puppy. So what I did is uh, basically I kept her away from them. And then I've been feeding them every three to four hours. And they're almost two weeks. So I'm starting to be able to where I can trust her. And just a couple of days ago, I started leaving her with them a little longer and she's been cleaning them she's not the best cleaner <laughs> you know it's uh you know i just change this carpet and if they poop on it she won't lick it up you know i just gotta keep it clean keep the box clean but uh and again like you have to feed your dogs a good quality dog food i also give them supplements quick lay down and uh you know it's kind of like breastfeeding a baby. You have to have a certain amount of water, you know, enough water, enough good nutrients in order to produce milk. So her milk is finally coming in enough for these puppies. But you hear how they're kind of grunting a little bit. And that's how you can tell if they're getting enough. If they're getting enough, they're quiet. So the ones on these bottom nipples, they're getting enough because uh, I always try to evenly distribute the puppies on the nipples. But, um, for some reason or another, they don't like to get up on these higher nipples. So I always put the bigger ones on there. So, uh, you know, they can get a higher up nipple and they're, you know, they'll push to get up there where the little ones I always put on the bottom nipples. So it's just, it's easier to see like this one to get on a bottom nipple. This is a bigger puppy, but you gotta kind of hold the nipple up. I don't have two hands. It'd be easier with two hands. But, lay down. But, this is what we do every three, four hours. This is what separates, as they say, the mice from men. Is what, you know, what real breeders do. Some really nice puppies right here. They would be way a lot bigger if the milk would come in a little bit more but again I'm giving her oxy mama and like her whole pregnancy I gave her oxy mate I just started uh feeding her some raw chicken that should help with the protein and I feed them you can do the large reed puppy and I'm feeding her royal canin uh, puppy canned dog food on her food add more protein in it and I gotta go to the store and get some cottage cheese anything to get this mama milking up some of them just milk up like cows and some take a little bit more work, as you were say. Like, she's just taking a little bit more work, uh, you know. And because when she did get the C-section, all of them survived. But uh, I had 12. So now I'm down to 10. And two passed because, you know, things happen and I guess something wasn't right with them. That's why I don't take deposits till they're two weeks of age because anything can happen until this time. So as you can hear, they're still moaning. 
but the longer I leave them with her, the more they suckle off her, the more her milk's gonna flow through, in other words. So if I'm lazy, which, you know, sometimes I am, I'm not gonna lie, like let's say I'll get to them every four hours. You know, yeah, they're not gonna die, but it's not helping anything with her milk coming through. So if I'm on it every three hours feeding them and I'm not late, then, you know, her milk's gonna come quicker sooner than later, in other words. And I always use these wipes because it says they're 90% water, um, you know, to help her wipe them off. She licks them, but she's not that good with it. And she just started licking them yesterday. So, you know, I just wipe them off. And then before I put them up, I usually put them in the incubator just to make sure she don't lay on them. I trust her, but not 100% trust her. So, I don't want any casualties. You know, I've been, this morning I left them with her for about two hours unattended. And, I mean, they're right next to my bedroom, so I can hear if somebody gets laid on or something. But, she was responsible. So, I mean, I think I'm gonna start doing that a little bit longer. And then I gotta, see these stitches, I gotta take those out. You gotta make sure that this is clean. You know, you don't really want to clean it with peroxide, but like more like saline solution, water. You want to make sure that they, uh, well, they're not doing it now, but before she would get angry if they would scratch it. Because now it's pretty much healed, but I need to pull the stitches. But, um, you know, that's why they do it in between the boobs, so the boobs fall over and they don't necessarily touch it. So when they're nursing, you want to kind of make sure they stay off that incision mark because... It's like a no-no. She really don't care anymore because now it's healed. It doesn't hurt. But when they get back from the, you know, from the vet, yeah, she was, she was angry when they would touch it. So I would sit here and literally sit here for two hours at a time and watch them nurse and make sure everybody stayed on a nipple. If they fell off, I would put them back on. Um, it's a lot entailed with moping a litter and most people don't do what I do or pay attention. Uh, like, okay, so like the nipples, like when they go in and out to go to bathroom, lay down. They, you wanna like make sure that you clean them and you wanna clean them like with a warm water would be best. And uh, you know, just in case there's poop or mud or bacteria on the nipples cause then the puppies could get bacterias. Or number one thing, which really sucks, and it does happen, and it's terrible. So, like, if they get a cut on their nipple, or um, let's say they have bacteria in their mouth, and they suck on this nipple. When they suck on this nipple, uh, bacteria can get down into that milk duct. And if bacteria gets down into that, that milk duct, it can either get into it from their nails or from them bringing bacteria in from outside, from going to bathroom, or uh, lots of other things, you know. Or another thing, you see how everything's like plastic in my box. Yeah, the top is wood, but right here, this is like PVC board, and I have like pipes around for my, uh, you know, my, I forgot what they call it, my pig rails. So if she lays right here and they're underneath her, they're not gonna get squashed behind her. But, um, I used to have a dog that would chew wood, and uh, I'm not gonna say she hasn't chewed wood, because she has chewed wood right there. But, uh, so, if they chew the wood and the wood splinters and they get the uh, a splinter in their boob, I used to have that problem. And then my vet said, hey, what you need to do is make sure you have no wood in your box. So, uh, I took all the wood out of my box, I put plastic pipes, plastic around this why I kept having mastitis and uh, like I said if bacteria gets in the milk duct that'll make the dog have mastitis mastitis is like uh, bacteria in the milk duct and then that's why you should always pay attention to all your nipples so if you have mastitis I did have a dog that had that uh, the last litter stay there she would uh, all of a sudden it would get real hard and lumpy and it was red really really red and then when you would feel it, it was hot to the touch. So like I've been sitting here watching them nurse 
Like her, I've been watching the nurse, so I would know if it was going into a problem before it was. But uh, I think it was, it was this nipple on the other dog. And uh, I noticed it was getting red. See, I, it, this is red, but it's not really that red. It's just from them sucking on it, but it was all red right here. And it was getting hard. See how this is pliable? It was getting hard and red. And, uh, you know, they said just keep an eye on her and, uh, you know, just squeeze it. Make sure there was no pus coming out of it. And then all of a sudden red pus started coming out of it. So when that starts to happen, uh, you just got to keep an eye on it. That can actually poison your puppies if they drink off of it. So I, uh, what I ended up doing is I just started rotating them on that nipple. Not just one particular puppy on that. Just I would just let them drink off a little, little bit. And if it got too nasty, you know, they said pull them all together. But if you don't let them nurse off of it, it'll get engorged. And then you might have to like surgically remove the boob at a later time. It'll pop. It was terrible. <laughs> I have had one pop before. But uh, it was, it, it, it would be terrible if that happened. But uh, I watched it. And, uh, you know, if it gets too bad, you just don't want to let them on that. You want to, you know, either pull the puppies away and wean them if they're old enough. Or if you keep them on her. You got to uh, take like a warm, wet cloth and like squeeze the milk out of that boob like every time you let them nurse. You got to really be adamant about that. But uh, they gave me a good antibiotic and uh, I gave her the antibiotics and it actually cleared up on its own. And I didn't have to pull her puppies. So that was an awesome, awesome thing. It was the first time I caught the problem before it got too bad. Like normally I just pull and wean the puppies. But I didn't have to do that because I got the right antibiotics. But with her, nothing's happening as of yet. And another thing uh, also helps is if you, I don't know, my husband says it helps. But if you give them a bath before you bring them in to have puppies. All these dogs are in my house having puppies. So I, we give them a bath. And then one particular dog, which was the first, the one that got the mastitis, she went into labor and I... You know, I didn't necessarily give her bath when she went into labor. She was outside, so I couldn't give her bath as she was having puppies. So, you know, and then after she had them, you know, she was clean, but I didn't necessarily give her a total fresh bath. And I don't know if that contributed to it or if it was me not wiping her nipples off or it was their puppy's nails. Another thing, you want to trim the puppy's nails and... Like you can tell if they're too long as if they're white. And when you trim them, you just trim. You take the little trimmer. When they're this little, I usually take finger nail clippers, but whatever like hangs off the side. You see how it's got the little hook? You wanna clip right at the hook because you don't want them cutting her nipples. Because again, if bacteria gets in a cut on the nipple, then it goes into mastitis. And mastitis is terrible. There's a lot of things, you know, you learn as you go, you know, things, you know, that if a puppy's crying constantly, they're either not getting enough milk, she's not licking them enough, they gotta poop, they gotta pee. A quiet puppy is a happy puppy, they always say. So, you know, just take the cues from the puppy. And uh, I normally don't talk tails, but where's this puppy at? She's underneath here. But her, her tail was so kinked, like kinked towards its butt. See how this one's, <laughs> see how that one's kinked? That's funny. Yeah, there was another one that was like that. Uh, where is it at? Oh, it's this one. See how this one's like the kink. kink. But um, yeah, so that one, it was kinked. So I kinked towards its butt. And it was kinked where it looked really crazy. So I docked that one just because normally I do not like to dock and I don't want to dock. But it was like, and oh, where are we at? But it was like obstructing its butt. See? Where it was kinked, it kinked down and it was obstructing the butt. So, I mean, I didn't want any reason for her not to be able to clean them properly or, you know, getting, not being able to, because you don't want any poop getting caked on their butts, and you want to just follow up through with them, and, like, I'm wiping them off with the wipes, and what's funny is, this is why 
I actually imprint on the dogs is because I'm here, they hear my voice, and this, I know it sounds weird, but um, the uh, white actually mimics like the mom's tongue. Yes, it's not warm. I did use, used to have a white warmer, but it, it got old really quick having a white warmer. But, uh, you yeah, know, just do this, make sure they're clean. She'll come back through and do it when I move out of the way. She'll lick them a little bit more and I'm gonna back off her and let her do it on her own. But uh, I just wanna make sure that they're clean and because basically as of right now, I am incubating them to make sure they stay the right temperature. And I have just for S's and grins, I have them with the oxygen machine because I want the air to be as clean as possible. Because another thing, uh, if they're not producing enough milk, you can tube feed them. So if you tube feed them and they get a little bit of uh, uh, formula in their lungs, the oxygen helps clear it out. And I don't know, I just think honestly the, the incubator does really help. Because as long as the puppy's body is a certain temperature and it has oxygen, I used to not have oxygen machine through it, but like as long as it stays at a certain temperature, then uh, all their organs stay there. All their organs and everything move properly, they poop properly, but when a puppy's cold, what ends up happening is everything slows down. Like their uh, digestive tract, their, um, you know, their blood pumping. So that's why they say the first week you should keep your incubator anywhere between, uh, they say 84, I do believe. I gotta look it up. I think it's 84 and 82 or 86 to 82. So I normally keep mine on 82. I don't want it too high because uh, depending on what the temperature of the room is, it can fluctuate in the incubator. So I don't want it too hot on them. I'd rather have it not as hot than too hot because if they, if the temperature gets really, really hot in the incubator, they'll start crying and you'll know like, hey, temperature's too hot. But um, the incubator really does help, you know. I believe it was honestly worth the money that I invested. I don't know why I waited so long to get the incubator. But like in between, you know, me feeding them, I used to not have an incubator. So I would put them in a basket with a heat lamp and the heat lamp would actually put too much heat on them at one point in time where the oxygen, the, incubator with the oxygen machine it actually has a fan and it's like a consistent flow of air and heat it's not like a concentrated heat lamp because i do have heat lamps this is just a, a normal bulb in this i do have heat lamps so when i do start to leave them with her like see the heat lamps on this side of the box so if they she'll nurse over here and if they want to get warm they'll go over to the corner where the heat lamp is and they'll all huddle up but if they're cold and you don't have a heat lamp, they'll all huddle together so you know that they're cold. And if they're too hot, they'll all lay around the box because they're hot and they'll just lay on their backs like, oh, it's so hot. But, um, you know, it's a lot of things you guys learn as you go with breeding dogs. All right, round two. And these are two-week-old icy rhino pups. And this is the second time she had a litter. And I'm doing the same thing with them because I don't want her to lay on them. She is getting the hang of it. For the most part, she won't lay on them. So again, <laughs> sit here again, more hours. So you wanna make sure, this is a dog that actually had mastitis. And this is the boob that had mastitis. As you see, it's good now. Good milk, nothing wrong with it. And the puppies are doing excellent. Have not lost one yet. But uh, you kind of want to listen for them because these, <laughs> these ones on the back boobs, they, they get a lot of milk on these back boobs. So they get full really quick on the back ones and they can aspirate. So when they aspirate, you can kind of hear milk in their lungs. One of them kind of sounds like it a little bit. I gotta figure out. 
But another cue that you know that they're getting enough. You see how these guys ain't whining? They're not whining at all. They're quiet. And then if they're sucking hard, see their tail's straight? I mean, if they're sucking, they're getting milk. And another thing, like I just paused and went over here. I made sure that everybody got on nipple. See, because these guys, they ain't happy with their upper nipples. So when I hear the bigger ones in the back, they're full. I'll pull them off. And they're bigger because they push everybody out of the way to get the best nipples. So sometimes just because these guys are a little bit smaller, it's just because these big old guys push them out of the way and take what they want, especially when I'm not sitting here. But uh, see, so just knock that one off. Come here. Sometimes you want to help them. It, 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 it kind of helps if you sit here. Because if not, they'll go and they'll knock everybody off. And then sometimes the other ones will just get, you know, or just fall asleep without getting full. Kind of need two hands for this. There we go. He's on it. But again, I have plastic. No wood exposed. So, sit here. Like, this one got off its nipple. And then, like, you just want to check your dog's nipples. Because one of them on the bottom is slightly inverted. So, when I put them on the nipple... It's going to be kind of hard for me to show you. You kind of got to push it down so the nipple's exposed and they can get it. See this one? He's like, hey. Again, these upper nipples don't give oh, as much as the back ones. But they still give some. And when you have this many puppies, you only have enough <laughs> nipples for dogs. You just got to rotate them. You know. But this is what we do. And I did start to leave her with them. Like for the most part I can leave them. But. Uh, she was on one of these blue ones. Earlier and I got a little scared. I heard them and I'm like. Ah, I don't know if I can trust you as of yet. But it's again, this actually builds a bond between you and the mom. And she trusts me and she loves me. You know. And then they like when you pet them and love on them. I feed them the moms twice a day. I just fed her, let her out. And now feed the puppies. This is what my life consists of right here. Just sitting here watching puppies eat. And I have a newborn as also. She's, he's two months. But necessarily, it's okay. The back ones always get more milk. I don't know why. Sometimes these side ones do. But, you know, and what's funny is because before she didn't want to lick him either at all. And I had to do everything for her last time as far as licking them because she, I don't know, maybe she's just lazy. I just wanted to make sure they all pooped. But they, come here, lay down. But now she's licking them, which is good. Because, like I said, some dogs, they just get it. They're naturally good mothers. And I've, in my experience, I've noticed she's a pretty big masculine dog. She's pretty big. She's probably like 135 normal weight. And um, the masculine dogs, even the vet was saying, like, they have a lot of testosterone in their body. So sometimes they're not as good mothers as the small, petite little females. We have a dog named Sugar. She is one heck of a mom. She'll take anybody's puppies, no matter who they are, no matter when you give her the puppies whether they're newborns or two weeks old or three weeks old she just naturally wants to be a mom and she's petite 
and she's very a feminine dog and she just loves puppies but you know when you have a more masculine looking female they tend to have more testosterone my vet was saying they're four they're not as motherly as other dogs and some dogs just you have to teach them like her i taught her she's being good she's being a good girl she's being a good girl you know and if i just every puppy for itself and you didn't teach them then very well she could lay on all of them or not feed all of them not rotate all of them i mean and then there's some times where you know you have to take cues from the mom like let's say if she starts pushing one to the side on purpose you know mom knows best so i would naturally help those individual dogs because when i've did that in the past i think oh well she just doesn't know you know then those dogs end up having something wrong with them so i don't help them out anymore you know but now she pretty much gets the hang of it and i can leave her with them but now that i'm accepting deposits on these guys i just don't want to take any chances with them so yeah she will not get them <laughs> by herself so i will again give them to her every four hours now because now they're two weeks you can go every four to five hours feedings and then i let you know like just my like sit close to where i can hear if she's laying on somebody and i also have a camera on her too so just monitor her and let her do her thing and love on her puppies and lick them and be a mom and again this is how we imprint on dogs because i'm here from the beginning they know my voice they know me they know my smell Heck, I probably smell like a dog because I'm always sitting in here with them. But they know my smell. So, you know, when they're about three weeks old, that's when we start to wean them from her. And I will feed them, you know, a little bit of gruel. And then I will bring them in to eat off her, kind of top them off a little bit. Because, you know, they'll start tearing her nipples up like three and a half, four weeks. And then it's a slow wean process. We wean from like three and a half, four weeks to six weeks. We're six weeks at, at the, I would say five week mark. They'll just be with their mom one time a day. That's it. And then just basically for their immune system purposes, they'll be with her one time a day. And then they'll eat and be in their little, you know, puppy box where they have a potty, potty uh, litter box where I teach them how to be litter trained and they start to be more independent and they'll just be with their mom one time a day so they still have that nourishment of the mother's milk for their immune system and you know emotional support from her you know but as far as just leaving them sometimes if you leave these dogs with their puppies just to run around and then they just grab their nipples and pull their nipples and stretch them out and make them all hangy and you know the mom gets tired of it you know sometimes you know if you leave a dog on a on a a puppy with a mom for too long they just they just get burned out they get tired they don't then they start biting at their puppies and yeah people say oh they're naturally weaning them but you can tell from a mother's cue when it's time when to take them away like literally you know when i start to feed them they'll be looking like they're draining her and like they're sucking the life out of her and she's just like come on so i always start to feed them and especially because i have to do this you know watch her feed them that's why i would start feeding them at three weeks because just naturally they're going to need more substance in their bellies other than milk and that's where people you know they either lack or don't start to feed them you know you should at least feed if you don't start feeding them at three and a half four weeks at least do it at four four to five i've heard of people like you know ask me oh well, when should i feed them and they're six week old puppies that's why they ain't as big as because you're not feeding your puppies you're not supplementing them you have to supplement them i see they're fat because she's milking up like a cow this this dog is finally getting milk but her first go round, she didn't produce as much milk as she was supposed to so i guess i mean i don't know if some just kicked in now that this litter she's got a lot of milk and see how he naturally i think this is a girl yeah it's a girl she naturally fell off because she's full and then you take a uh, find which nipple it is. She's fine. Sometimes I'll hold them like this. I taught her to lick them. And she'll lick them. They always lots of praise. Say good girl. 
freezer, let her know it's good. Some dogs just hate to eat poop. No matter what, they don't. Like, they'll lick them. But once they start to poop, they're like, nope, I ain't eating that. You know, dogs, some dogs are weird. But some of them don't care. She just got to where she would lick it. Last time, she wouldn't lick it. You wouldn't eat the poop. She's like, nope. All right. So, we would take one off of here. Yes, hold on. Let's see what. Move. Oh. Wait. And she's licking me. You want to make sure that they're actually on a nipple? Come here. I see. Bye. Because they could be sucking and not even on a nipple. And he's not on a nipple. You want to hold it? Sorry, it's hard because I'm in this box. All right, they got it. This is how we do it. All right, guys, this is Desiree's Monsterpiece Kennel. And here is week two of the puppies. And as you can see, I'm leaving them with her. She's doing awesome, feeding them, cleaning them, doing everything herself. I don't have to clean them. I don't have to incubate them. She's being a good mom. Sometimes it takes them one time showing them how to be a mom. Sometimes it's two times. I mean, heck, sometimes they don't ever learn. But, you know, with her, she knows now. And also with Icy, the Blue Merle Harlequin, took her a couple tries, too, to learn. I mean, just don't give up. Now look how thick and fat these puppies are. They're, they're, she's milking up really good. Her milk supply is going good. I've been feeding her, uh, you know, a small, ah, sorry, large breed Yukonuba puppy. I've been feeding her Royal Canin canned food. I've been giving her chicken legs, raw chicken legs, and cottage cheese. And her milk is just coming through great. She's milking up well. Now that they're constantly suckling off her, I'm leaving them with her. They're just going to blow up from here. Shows you time and patience and care. When you love your dogs, that's all it takes. All it takes. This is Tula and Rhinos. Puppy, it's two weeks old. Just goes to show you a little bit of patience. Hers are going on three weeks. And now I am leaving them with her full time. So they can eat off her constantly and be in here with them. She can bond with them. And they're all getting the equal amount of milk from her. All it takes is time and patience with these mamas. Sometimes they need to be taught a little bit of patience, a little bit of love. That's all they need.